All right, arc length. Let's think about a curve or an arc. So here's a curve right here. I want to know how far is it from one end to the other. Now, when I'm talking about distance or length, I'm going to draw, do not copy the green line segment. That's not, that's the straight line distance. I want to know if we were driving on that road, what would the distance be? So I don't want that distance, I want the actual curved distance. So what did we do when we want to find area before? Yes, but what, uh, before we knew about integrals, how did we estimate the area? So if I wanted to know this area, what did we do? Split it, split it into small pieces. So they were close, before they were close to rectangles, and we just added up all the rectangle heights. So we're going to do the same thing, meaning we're going to subdivide. So let's break it into a few pieces. So if I break it up like this, and I'm going to use a highlighter because I don't want to cover up the original curve. So if I added up those five line segments, the lengths of those five line segments, I would have an estimate that's pretty good. So the idea is we want to cut this up into pieces and then measure the length of each single piece. And what we're going to do is eventually cut it up into f smaller and smaller pieces and we'll get closer and closer to the length. That will turn into the integral. So let's think about how we compute these. And we'll go from x value of a to x value of b, just like uh, we always have. And we're estimating, uh, estimate using small line segments. All right, now we need to figure out how long is one of these line segments. So I'll just pick the second one for no good reason. How do I figure out this length right here? Basically, yeah. That's what we're going to do. So what I need is <clears throat> I can find the coordinates of these two points without much trouble, right? Just use the x value and then the f of x value, the other x value and the other f of x value. So if I write down the coordinates, we'll go with, so this will be x, we'll go xk and xk plus 1. Those are two adjacent x values. Did I accidentally write profanity on the board? Okay. <laughs> It's a physics joke. I wouldn't understand. All right, so we're going to make a right triangle, and we're going to be able to compute the x and the y of this triangle. And then we're just going to take the hypotenuse right down there. So I could call this delta x, and specifically it's big x, xk plus 1 minus xk. So big minus small. So any questions on getting the bottom of the triangle right there? So this curve, I need to give the curve a name. We'll just choose the most boring name, y equals f of x. So how do I get the delta y, which I don't have space to right there. So I'll just measure over here. So this is going to be delta y. So how do I get delta y? It's going to be big minus small, but I need the big y value and the small y value. So it's the y value above xk plus 1 is f of xk plus 1. And the y value above xk is f of xk. So it's going to look really similar. We're just going to take f of those two x values. 
So we have f of xk plus 1 minus f of xk. Totally don't have room to write. So delta y fxk plus 1 minus fxk. All right, so that's delta x, delta y, and then the actual length that I want So I know the length of the kth segment. So I'll write this as LK, L sub K, square root, delta X squared plus delta Y squared. All right, so that's just Pythagorean theorem right there. So there's a few different ways we can write this down, <clears throat> estimating these. I'm going to re-label uh, y. I'm going to use an estimate for delta y instead of this version. How do we get the slope of this blue line segment? Actually. We want to estimate the slope of the blue line segment. So how do you take a curve and get a slope out of it? What's the answer to every question in Calc 1? Derivative. derivative, very good. So derivative of a function will give you the slope once you plug in some x value. So what we're going to do is use an estimate for delta y. It's going to be the slope times delta x. So for example, if the slope is 0, then I'm going to go up 0 units. If the slope is 1, then however far I go over, I'll go up the exact same amount. If the slope is 1 half, however far I go over, I'll go up half. If the slope is 2, if I go over a certain amount, I'll go up twice as much. So this is how we're going to estimate delta y right here. And of course, slope is f prime. Uh, we'll use the uh, xk for this. Technically, you could use any x value from xk to xk plus 1. We'll just choose the first of those values times delta x. So that's what we're going to use for delta y. So technically, in this picture, the slope would be a little steeper than the one we used. So I would be actually getting the length of that line segment right there if I used the slope at xk. So I tried my best to draw a tangent line to the curve right at xk. So this one would be a little steeper, but the idea is you cut it in small enough pieces and it doesn't really matter what x value you use inside the interval. So we're ready to rewrite this uh, lk. So delta x stays where it is. I'm going to replace delta y with what's at the upper left corner. So that's f prime xk times delta x squared. And now we get to do some algebra right here. So I'm going to square the second term. Now I'm going to get lazy here and delta x represents uh, one thing. So it's not delta times x, it's one entire uh, quantity which is called delta x. So I'm not going to keep wrapping it in parentheses. So here we have f prime xk squared times delta x squared. I just distributed the power across the multiplication. So again, that's not freshman's dream because we're not adding. If we're adding, we'd be in trouble. But I'm allowed to distribute the square power across multiplication right there. 
Delta X squared over. Nope. All right, what can I do with delta x squared now? Algebraically. How, so what's the word? What's the proper word for get it outside? Undistribute. undistribute. What's the, what's the f word for undistribute? Factor. Factor is not a four-letter F word. It'd be cool if it was. Foil is, though. <laughs> All right, why is delta x not squared outside? Because it's, yeah, so that's why, that's why it's unmultiplied or factored out. But when I bring it outside the square root, it was square root squared, so that cancels out. All right, so this is what we're using for LK. So I now can estimate the length with this right here. And I'm gonna use the letter L for arc length. So it is approximately the sum of all the LKs from K equals one to N, which is sum square root one plus F prime X squared delta X, K equals one to N. So this is an estimate for the length. If I want the actual length, What we're gonna do is take a limit as n goes to infinity. And of course, also means delta x is gonna approach dx. So delta x will turn into the dx when we apply this integral, or this limit. Yeah, so at the bottom is where we're starting. So we're starting at k equals one. And then the second term will be k equals two, three, four, five, six, up until the n value. So like for example, I basically chose n was five in the breakdown here. I wanted five pieces. Okay. So that would be a five uh, subdivisions. Number. That's kind of like a constant yeah, so if I wanted estimates, I could actually go and compute these different points and figure all this out as an estimate. Uh, but we're going to take a limit and it will turn into an integral for us. So we're going to take a limit, and we're going to send n to infinity. Summation k equals 1 to n. And this turns into the integral from a to b square root one plus f prime of x squared dx. And this is what we're gonna use for arc length. So it turns out arc length is generally easier to compute than volumes. So you're gonna find the computations here to not be very bad at all. You could still end up with an ugly integral, but getting the integral should be should feel a lot easier than doing cross sections. You have a dx dy integral and all that fun stuff. So this is assuming we had a function of x. If I had a function of y to begin with, so if my curve, so if my curve uh, was a function of y, so if I had f equals g of y, for example, and my curve looks something like that, obviously that's well, actually, that could be a function. Let's do one that's definitely not a function of x. That's very much not a function of x. However, it could be a function of y because it passes the horizontal line test. So if this is the curve we're working with, your length would be almost exactly the same. You just have everything as function of y. So we got g prime of y squared 
dy. So there's how your arc length could look. And if you want to just summarize and have one on your cheat sheet, I think this would be a good version to put on your cheat sheet right here. Don't need to write of x or of y every time. Just use that. All right, let's go ahead and do some examples. So our first example, length of the curve y equals 4 square root 2 over 3 x to the 3 halves. You might think that's kind of crazy until you see what the integral turns into and then it'll make sense. All right, so that'll be the curve from, or in this case, I'll write 4 x in the interval 0 to 1. So I could write down the arc length formula a to b square root 1 plus the other option, instead of writing f of x or f prime of x, you could write y prime if that works better for you. But I'm going to go ahead and give this function a name. Call it f. So this is f prime of x squared dx. All right, so first thing we have to do, what is f prime of x? And then the other thing. What about a and b? So first of all, are a and b x or y values? X. A and b are both x values. So what's the smallest x value we're going to use? Zero. What's the biggest? One. One. So starting and ending values are usually really, really obvious when you're doing these. So I don't have to think about things too much. So we got integral 0 to 1. All you need to do, take derivative of f and square it, plug it in. That's it. So there's not too much going on here. So I want you to finish this problem off. Find f prime, square it, plug it in. Any questions on the steps up here? All right, I'm not going to finish this integral. Little u sub, and pretty much it's all you need. U sub, anti power rule, and you got the anti derivative.
So our next example. So this curve will be x cubed over 12 plus 1 over x from the point 1 comma 13 twelfths to 4 comma 67 twelfths. So let's think about what's happening here. Do we have a function of x or a function of y? X. We got a function of x. So let's go ahead and call it f of x. So we got a function of x. <coughs> so our length is from x equals a to x equals b. Square root 1 plus f prime x squared dx. All right, so I need to know f prime. So go ahead and compute f prime. Be a little careful with that one over x. You can always write it as x to the negative first power. Derivative is not natural log. What did I mess up in my algebra? No, I think that's okay. So the first term, x to the fourth over 16, that's just x squared over four squared, or x squared squared over four squared. If I multiply, First, last, I have x squareds cancel and I get minus one fourth. So those are my inside outsides. What about my last term? What rookie mistake did I make? Uh, yup, it's two negatives. Should be positive. So that's f prime squared. We just got one plus that thing. What about beginning and ending x values? What is my small x? One. one. What's my big x? Four. four. All right, if I had a dy integral, I'd be picking the y coordinates off of those. I got an x integral, so I'm picking the x coordinates. That's important to pay attention to that. So I got one minus a half, which is positive one half. So who's a factoring champion and can factor this? That looks a lot like what we started with, doesn't it? 
what is the difference between what we started with, forget that plus one, but what we started with and where that came from and what we have now and what this could factor into. What's the difference between what I underlined? So the one half went from negative to positive. So let's think about where that came from when we foiled. So if I look over here and just go plus, that would be plus plus, how would that factor? How would that change the line above it? Change it to a plus, right? That's how your inside outside terms would be positive. So this is going to factor back to what we have up here. So that's x. What's that? Uh, if you knew that the middle term would change signs, but I mean, I think that's pretty difficult to see. All right, what can I do next? Algebra. This doesn't look like any of the forms I showed you, so all that trick stuff's all done. And hyperbolic inverse trig stuff's not going to work. How about regular old algebra? Uh, look the, make the common denominators for the I could go common denominators. Eliminate the square root. So let's cancel it out, right? Square square root. Boom. And I'm about to do calculus, so let's write this plus x to the negative 2, because I'm about to be integrating here. All right, so finish this integral off. This is just anti-power rule right here. Nothing fancy, just anti-power rule. I don't want to impress you with my arithmetic skills, so I'll just leave it like this. It's good enough. Good enough for web work. All right, so that factoring was a little strange. Maybe not something you would see on your own. So any other questions before we jump into the next problem? All right, so this is the last problem we're going to do uh, in this, with this form, and then we're going to switch forms a little bit on um, the next few. Oh yeah, sure would be. All right, arc length of this curve. So we're going to let this equal f of x. And I want you to go ahead and line this up. <clears throat> so 
So take derivative, plug it, plug it into the arc length formula, and I'll give you two minutes. Should be an easy derivative. Go as far as you can. Take the antiderivative. It should not be too difficult to do. Hopefully I picked an easy enough one. All right, so we can set up the arc length integral. We're going to have one serious problem. What happens when x equals 0? What, wh what will we have when x equals 0? Undefined. Undefined. So that's a little problem. You can see it happening. You can see the problem occurring right, right over here. That's not going to work when x equals 0 with x in the denominator. And the problem is 0 is included right there. So we have a, a problem right here. So this expression is undefined at x equals 0, which is important because that's one of the x values that we're going to be using. Can you reciprocate the whole thing? Uh, n no, but we're going to do something kind of similar. So the reciprocal would be 0 but uh, that would not co uh, correspond to the arc length, unfortunately. So what we're going to do is switch. So we have it a function of x. We're going to switch into a function of y. So we're going to solve for x and turn this into a dy integral. All right? So all we really have time to do is solve for uh, x and then convert our endpoints. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we have y equals x over 2 to the 2 thirds. So that's y to the 3 halves equals x over 2. 2y to the 3 halves equals x. All right, there's our function of x. We got to convert our endpoints. Before they were x equals 0 and x equals 2. So what do those turn into? x equals 0 converts into y equals 0. And remember, I'm using the first uh, equation there. And x is 2. This is 2 over 2 to the 2 thirds power. And that's going to equal 1. And this is our y coordinate. So it went from x going 0 to 2 corresponds to y going from 0 to 1. So when we set this up. Uh, we're going to have integral from 0 to 1, square root 1 plus, I better give this a name, we'll call it g of, oh no, not that one, this one down here. This is g of y, so we're going to have to do 
g prime of y squared dy. So we're going to have to finish this problem off Monday.